The American Legion Post 202 hosted the annual Hopkinton Veterans Day ceremony at the Senior Center. In Flanders Field is a poem written during the First World War by a Canadian physician, Lieutenant Colonel John McCrae. First published in December of 1915, the readers became inspired and touched. Its verses became universally memor memorialized and school children throughout the United States would recite this poem every Veterans Day. In keeping with tradition, Kiki Fossbender, a sophomore at Hopkins High School, will do the honors this morning. In Flannard's fields, the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, that lurk still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flannard's fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from falling hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep through poppies blow in the Flandered fields. Pastor Rob Davis talked about his experiences in the military in South Africa. There was uh, one of my uh, trials, but really the, the, the last trial was the worst uh, in the military for me. Our unit was assigned to a suburb of Johannesburg called Soweto, and Soweto was a, uh, probably had a million people, all black folks in segregated South Africa, and they were rioting. And typically what would happen is uh, the military, the South African military was very well equipped, and the uprising of blacks was very uh, unsophisticated. And so uh, teenagers, like 14-year-olds, they would make Molotov cocktails, which would be a petrol bomb, you know, with a rag and a, a glass bottle, and they would just throw it and create havoc and set buildings on fire and whatever not. But when it was overwhelming, the police couldn't handle it, they'd call us in. But here's the problem. When uh, we were called in, we would open up with machine guns and just start firing and just killing, just randomly. And these 14-year-olds would be running like crazy and just mow them down. And I said, I am not willing to do that. Now, I don't know what kind of a unit you've been in, but in my situation, my officer in charge of the armored car that we were in, if I refused to shoot, he had the authority to shoot me. And he probably would have because there was a lot of tension about people that were for or against the government. And I wasn't like for this idea. David Melly from Representative Carolyn Dykema's office spoke at the ceremony. Um, I grew up in Newton, down the road. Um, and actually, uh, both of my grandfathers are from Boston. Um, both of them served in the Air Force. They did not know each other, but <laughs> they were both in uh, the Air Force. And my mother's father uh, grew up in Roslindale. Um, he was the son of Italian immigrants, and he joined the Air Force when he was, I think, 18 years old. Um, he was down at Falmouth um, in Otis Air Force Base. Uh, my mother was born at Falmouth Hospital because he was serving down there, and my grandmother was down there with him. Um, and about two, three years into his service, um, he was on an aircraft uh, working as a radar technician um, when the aircraft went down over the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and there were 19 men aboard the aircraft, and he was one of only three survivors. Hopkinton veteran Ted Hoyt also shared some of his experiences. Technically, I spent 23 years in the Army. The last 10 was really my name on a list, so I can't really count that. Um, I do have a lot of military in my family. My dad was a Maritime Academy Naval Reserve. My younger brother retired after 23 years as a Navy SEAL. My cousin slash brother uh, retired as a Master Chief from the Air Force after 27 years. Your mission is not done. My kids don't listen to me, but they might listen to you. And it makes it our collective mission to pass the torch to teach them what it means to be brave and free. So please, your mission is not done until the last full measure. Teach them by your presence and bearing. 
But if you have the opportunity, try to talk to them, to those grandkids, to those great grandkids, to the random ragamuffins that you might see in, in, in meetings like this, and teach them the ideals of why we were willing to fight and die. Continue the mission. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.